Yes, the words manifest like the steam on my breath. Condensation on my mind. Hello guys, it's Unders and we are in Logic and this is an overview of Neutron 3 which is the latest installation of Neutron from the guys at Isotope. I've covered the original Neutron and Neutron 2 in immense detail across the channel so if you want to check out the previous versions absolutely go ahead. What we're going to do in here is just go over how Neutron works, what the point of it really is and what's kind of the magic feature of it. So, super quick breakdown. If we have a look at the plugin itself, we've got two main areas separated out. We've got like this dark blue area, and then we've got like a lighter gray sort of around the edges on the top on the right hand side, right? This dark blue area, this is like our plugin. It's like having a little host inside Logic or your DAW, and then having extra plugins that you load inside it. So instead of a channel strip concept of an EQ, a compressor, etc., all in that channel strip format, you can literally add in the different Neutron modules in any order that you want and any mix blend that you so need. So as we can see at the moment, by default, it loads up with the EQ. Now, there's this orange box just here, highlighted, and there's an X in here, and if we bash that guy, we go to nothing. And look, we've got start building your sound. Create your own signal chain by clicking the plus to add modules. Boom, you know, we just remove that, and that's how we've got to this point here. Alternatively, we can use the track enhance or the mix assistant to automatically set that up. So let's do that straight away. This is kind of the magic touch of Neutron. It's really, really superb at finding issues with sounds, correcting them with EQ, adding a bit of compression, getting an idea of a full track. If you want to see how this works on all the individual tracks, there's another video I've done that shows that. It takes a while to set up. What we're going to do here is just do it on the stereo output. So Neutron 3 is here on the stereo output. We're going to have to put audio into it, and then we're going to click up here on Mix Assistant, and I'm going to do the Enhance track, and let's see what it does. Everybody trap, trap, trap in the band, no, but they can't rap like me. No, what they know about road? They ain't stack no dough, they ain't never made no pee. Talk to like they're bad, they ain't real. They ain't really out in the street. Just check grease every time that they open their mouth and they speak on the beat. Heat up like it's pepper. Ain't nobody doing it better. Claim their gang don't bang like Beretta. Claim they got a bad beat, but I never met her. Seems like they. Everybody trap, trap, trap in the band, no, but they can't rap like me. No, what they know about road? They ain't stack no dough, they ain't never made no pee. All right, so this track wasn't fully mixed, so let's see what it kind of did. It's added in five plugins for us. It's added the Sculptor, Equalizer, Compressor 1 and Compressor 2, and then an Exciter right on the end. The order from left to right in here is the signal flow. So we've got audio coming in, they run through these guys, and then they run into the output over here. We can reorder these as much as we like, but let's have a look at what the mix assistant just did. So it's added the sculptor, and I've done a whole video on the sculptor. It hasn't narrowed it down. It's covered the whole spectrum. So I'm guessing it's kind of figured out this is a whole track, and it's set it as an instrument bus by default. What might have been more useful would be, say, all purpose, and we could do like add polish or something like that, but it's chosen instrument bus, and we'll roll with what it chose. Next, on the equalizer, it's made a nice cut here. It's got a dynamic cut going on here on the three node. A uh, nice little boost around seven and a little top end lift and some roll off right at the end. So it's made some important EQ decisions. Uh, what I'm going to do just to demo real quickly, it's usually good at cutting out resonances. So let's see what it did around this node of five. Everybody trap, trap, trap in the band, no, but they can't rap like me. No, what they know about road? They Cool. So it's taken a load of boxiness out, which is really nice. Uh, we'll put that roughly back where it was. So compression wise, it's added a multiband compressor and it's set the bands to be split. So let's see what these guys are doing. Um, it's compressing over well, here. It's got a threshold of minus 33 on the high end, uh, but much less on the mids and the lows of only minus 19.3. If you want to understand a little bit about how the compressor works, I've done a whole video on the compressor as well. Everybody trap, trap, trap in the band, no, but they can't rap like me. No, what they know about road? They ain't stack no dough, they ain't never made no pee. Talk, talk like. Cool, it's compressing really hard, okay? So it's taking like 5 dB out on the majority of the track, so this space here. 
everybody trap 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 in the band no but they can't rap like me but it's taken the initiative to do a slightly uh, more insane version on the high end. That's what's given us all that extra brightness. Check this out. Now that's far too extreme on its own, but in the balance of the track, it kind of works. Everybody trap, trap, trap in the band, no, but they can't rap like me. All right, now, something I wouldn't have expected, but let's put Compressor 2 right afterwards. Let's kept it a single band. Let's see what it's doing. Everybody trap, trap, trap in the band, no, but they can't rap like me. No, what they know about Cool. So it's taking about 3 dB out. This is acting a bit like a glue compressor. Um, it's a little bit slower on the attack look, like 49 millisecond attack, uh, whereas before 0.1, for example, on the highs. So it's kind of doing that slow kind of glue effect. Quite smart. Don't ne necessarily know whether I would have done that, but that's sort of the point. This guy is giving you a good base to work off. And then it's gone and thrown the exciter and it's split band again and it's split the bands the same here as it had for the multi-band compressor which is interesting. It's got a mixed blend of about 50% look on the lows and the upper mids uh, and it's fully in the, the warm kind of type of distortion there and then on the high end uh, it's probably closer to like a 60% blend there. Yeah, like 58 it was. Uh, it's pushed a lot harder and this is right up in the tape saturation. So different types of saturation there. So overall, let's A, B it. Let's have it switched off. Everybody trap, trap, trap in the band, no, but they can't rap like me. No, what they know about road? They ain't stack no dough, they ain't never made no P. Talk drugs like they're bad, they ain't real. They ain't really out in the street. Just check grease every time that they open their mouth and they speak on the beat. Heat up like it's pepper. Ain't cool, so it's a bit harsh, but it's bringing up lots of level. I would ease that compressor back a bit, but it's giving me a good point of starting and finding this boxiness is useful in the way that it's going to let me know that I need to go back in my mix and find out what's adding up to cause this boxiness in this area. Um, overall, like it's okay. I think it's, it's done way too much um, excitement here with the tape saturation. Uh, and that lift here is maybe a bit much. You really hear that on the vocal. But overall, it's given us a good starting point. And that right there is kind of the magic thing that Neutron does. And it can figure out different parts of your mix. I've done it on the overall mix, but it can figure out a kick drum and improve a kick drum. And it can figure out vocals and improve the vocals. Let's have a look at all the mod modules individually now. So we've got two compressors. This is useful for having two stages of compression. Sometimes you want to compress, then EQ, and then maybe compress again further down the line once we've added an exciter. Um, it just gives kind of a double lift of compression. Rather than having one compressor do all the work, you can have that really fast compression like it gave us, and then a much slower one just to lift everything else up as well. Don't always need it, but sometimes I will absolutely use two compressors, so it's great that that's included. We've then got the EQ, which is also functioning as a dynamic equalizer. Really, really useful. We've then got the exciter. Having a multiband exciter, again, super useful, but it's not just a multiband exciter because it also functions in that it can do this retro type tape, tube, and warm. So it simulates different types of distortion, and you can have this XY parameter mixed between them. So you can really blend between them. All right. That is a really nice feature to have. It means you can custom blend those distortion types and you can split them into different frequency areas. When you take this down to a multi-track, it means you could have just a tape saturation on just the top end of your kick if that's what you really wanted to do and it's really simple to introduce. Then got a gate. It didn't uh, introduce the gate for us, but it's really useful in having a gate in a channel, uh, especially if you've recorded live drums and you've got lots of bleed, Gate is your absolute friend right here. And also it functions in sidechain mode, which can be useful. So you can tell the gate to be triggered via something else. I've then got Sculptor. I won't really explain what Sculptor is. I would suggest either have a look at Isotope's video or have a look at my video explaining how to use it and what it's doing to your sound. But essentially it's a 32 band compressor designed to accentuate certain sound profiles. Then lastly, we've got a transient shaper, mainly going to be used on percussion elements, but you can be really creative with the transient shaper and get it to do all kinds of funky things. Um, this guy does 
This guy does have a few nice features in that we can do like a sharp, medium or smooth type, which is kind of like really dialing in a compression profile of different compressors, but on the transient shaper. Then combined with the fact we've got precise, balanced and loose, and we've got a nice attack and sustain, we can really twist up what we're doing with it and get pretty creative. If you've lost your transients on something or something's over compressed in a mix you've been sent, you can bring all those boys back with this. Super useful. Awesome things to note. If we have a look across the top up here, we also have a whole batch of presets and they're good presets. They can get us a good starting point for anything that we're really after, but I would make use of the mixer system personally. It's great that they're there. We've got access to the undo history. So everything we've been doing and messing about with so far, we can undo pretty much, which is pretty damn useful. It doesn't always exist. This little lightning icon here, we can go into a zero latency mode. So if we've been mixing, we're gonna record something, latency often becomes an issue, bash this guy on zero latency mode, and we can still have everything pretty much as it was previously. Settings, we can dive into all the different settings. I will probably do another video on this if people need help with it. Uh, but things like the metering and that are really useful to set up how you would like. So down the right hand side, this is kind of all of the output side of Neutron. You notice right at the top, it's got a limiter built in as well. If we click on it, it highlights in orange and anything highlighted in orange in Neutron is generally, generally going, hey, this is the thing you've got selected. I'm active right now. So when you click on it, as you can see, it's active and we have our ceiling here represented via the orange detail in the middle here. So we could put it on a master bus and we could have like the, the 0.3 jazz if we were going out to CD or something like that. There's three little dots just here and we can actually change the style and mode as well. So we've got clear, thick and smooth and we've got the um, IRCs that you found in Ozone as well as the like hard limit built in. Super useful, not obvious that they're there. And changing these when you're limiting quite hard can really change the profile of the sound. So if you've limited something and it's not sounding quite right, try changing and adjusting these modes and profiles. You might find that something snaps out much better. And like I say, it's not obvious that those are there. We've then got an input and output just represented as faders here. The classic option click always resets to zero. Nice little feature to have as well. At the bottom, we've got bypass. Bypass is the plugin. As you see, everything grays out. And like I said, the bright orange, hey, this is what you've got selected right now. It makes it super obvious to what's going on. Boom, it gives you a call to action to unbypass it. These little guys at the bottom. So we've got a sum to mono option. So if we click on this guy, it's gonna sum the left and right stereo into mono. Really good for checking mono compatibility. If you've mixed something that's nice and wide, click this on. If it disappears, you've messed it up and you need to figure out your phase. Next to it, we've got an invert polarity. Again, useful mixing tool. If you've recorded live drums, you'll probably have to use this on your snare top or snare bottom just to invert the phase if you didn't mic it up absolutely perfectly. Uh, and then we've got a swap, so we can swap the left and right channel. So you've got some cool panning going on. You wanna check out what it's like going the other way and how that works with a mix. Just click that guy. It's gonna switch those channels around for you. Super simple. Overall pan control, we can push it up or down. We've got 50 either side and C means center. And then we've got a width control. So if you've ever seen me use the Waves S1, it's a similar principle here and that we can push that width a little bit out. It makes use of some phase and delay trickery just to get some false wideness. Let me just demo it for you really, really quickly on the bus here. Hopefully you can hear the whole track widen out a little bit. We might get phasing issues on something this big. Let's try it out. Everybody trap, trap, trap in the band, no, but they can't rap like me. No. What they know about road? They ain't stack no dough, they ain't never made no pee. Talk to like they're bad, they ain't real. They ain't really out in the street. Just check grease every time that they open their mouth and they speak on the beat. Heat up like it's pepper. And as you can see that I brought it all the way back to make something completely mono. So if you want pure mono compatibility, we can play that trick as well. And again, option click, boom, back to zero. Last but not least, my favorite feature in any plugin ever, resizability. There's this tiny little like arrow marker down here. If we click on that, the whole thing goes white and we can resize the plugin. I love resizing plugins. It's one of the best things for me. I like to go full screen, focus on that one thing and work on that. So guys, that was essentially it. That is a quick overview of Isotope its main features, what it includes inside it, and it's pista resistance, if you will. 
and its main feature, if you will, which is the Mix Assistant. What I didn't go over was the fact that Mix Assistant also has this balance control. We'll look at the balance control in the automatic Mix Fix video because it involves having uh, an insight on every single channel and it's gonna adjust the balance and give you a focus. Effectively, it's an auto balance for your mix. Super impressive, worked pretty well if you just wanna know the crack without watching the whole video, but setting it up, a little bit of a faff, but much quicker than going through and leveling everything out. Really need to just get an idea of whether or not it's worth it for you. I hope the video was helpful for you guys and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. If there's anything else you want to know about Neutron 3 and I haven't covered it in a video yet, give us a shout and I'll see what I can do for you. See you on the next one.